Welcome to Fun with Annuities with your host, me, Stan the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent. Can annuities be fun? Can contractual guarantees be fun? Absolutely they can. Find out the brutal facts about annuities with no sales pitches or high pressure nonsense. Just the brutal and factual annuity truth, which is all you need to hear. Let's have some fun with annuities and let's have that fun start right now. Welcome to Fun with Annuities. I'm your host, Stan, the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent, licensed in all 50 states. I am so glad you joined us today for financial royalty gracing our presence. His name is Dr. Mark Skousen. I've known him for a long, long time. Let me tell you just a little bit about him. Um, I was reading his bio and it is, it is as chunky of a bio as I've ever seen. Um, he is a nationally known investment expert that's been doing it for 40 to 50 years that I can remember. I mean, he's been around the block, forgotten more than most people ever know. Uh, since 1980, he's been the editor-in-chief of Forecast and Strategies, which is an investment newsletter you need to get. And all of this is going to be on his um, celebrity guest page on theannuityman.com. We'll have all the links to everything that he has done and you need to uh, be a part of. He's the producer of something called Freedom Fest, which is the world's largest gathering of free minds. It's actually a face-to-face -face convention that meets every July. Um, typically, it's in Las Vegas, but he's going to start moving it around the country, which I think is fantastic. He did one in South Dakota during the COVID time period, which is great. Um, here's the one that's going to trip you out a little bit. He's a former analyst for the CIA. In addition to that, he's been a columnist to Forbes. He's written a bunch of books, like bestsellers like The Structure of Production, economics on trial, um, the complete guide to financial privacy. I can keep going on and on and on. Him and his wife are the dynamic duo of the financial world for sure. Joanne is obviously the bigger brain of the two, but I got Mark <laughs> this time. He's got five kids. He's just a, he's just a well-traveled guy. He's lived in eight countries um, and has lectured in uh, not only the United States, but in 70 countries. He grew up in one of my favorite cities ever, Portland, Oregon. And uh, Mark Skousen, thank you so much for joining me on Fun with Annuities. I appreciate it. Stan, I really appreciate it. And I understand you officially changed your name. Is that true that you, Stan, the Annuity Stan, Man, Stan, the is annuity. You know, I'm, your real name now? You know, Mark, you know, when you're married to a dynamic female like both of us are, and the lovely Christine has yet to be totally convinced that we need to go in that direction legally, she lets me play around with my logoed hat and things like that. And if you're watching us on the Fun with Annuities YouTube channel, you see uh -huh. the fact that Mark and I both are sporting hats because we have that kind of confidence. But for all the people in the major podcast platforms, I welcome you as well. Mark, I've always wanted to ask you this question kind of to jump off the cliff a little bit. Freedom Fest is a, um, is a really neat gathering. It's, it's, it's eclectic. It's eccentric. It's high IQ. It covers a lot of boundaries and ground. How did that all start and how, how did you get involved in that? Give me the genesis of Freedom Fest. Well, actually it came about because uh, I, was, I applied for and became the president of FEE, the Foundation for Economic Education in New York. I always wanted to live in New York. I was an old time Yankee fan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and my wife loves Broadway. <clears throat> so we accepted that position. It's a nonprofit. It's one of the oldest free market think tanks known as FEE, F-E-E, -E, mm -hmm. 35 room mansion in uh, Irvington, New York, um, in Westchester County, just uh, 20 miles north of, uh, of the city. And uh, when I was there, I thought, gee, uh, people used to hear of FEE, but uh, now it's Cato, it's Heritage, it's Reason Foundation. These are the better known free market think tanks. But FEE was the oldest one, um, but it, it kind of lost its way and lost uh, a following. And I said, what can we do to jumpstart, uh, get people to remember and bring back FEE? And I said, let's have a national convention. Let's bring together all the free market think tanks, but let's make it a retail conference, not for those of us in the movement, but uh, investors, uh, authors, professors, uh, concerned citizens, all of these sorts of things. Because I think we've been losing the battle for freedom. I mean, the, you can look at all of the regulations and the the IRS, uh, uh, the uh, tax code is now 100,000 pages. Uh, 
we're we're being squeezed uh, in a sense uh, from both sides. Uh, prohibitions and mandates are coming to us, and especially in the last couple of years, as you know, everybody's mandating masks and mandating social distancing and lockdowns and all of this stuff, um, and it concerns me. So my idea was to start Fee Fest uh, in, in 2022. We did it in Las Vegas because Las Vegas has the most hotel rooms, the lowest prices, easy to get to. Mm -hmm. It's a libertarian city in so many ways. So we've been holding it at Freedom, uh, Freedom Fest for uh, a long time, since 2020. Uh, I lasted as president of Fee for just a year because I wasn't very good at fundraising. I don't know about you, Stan, but <laughs> to me, uh, uh, fundraising is a unique ability and I just didn't have it. I'd rather charge somebody a specific price, which is what we do at Freedom Fest. We don't do any fundraising. Mm -hmm. We are a for-profit conference and our customer, uh, our customer are, are attendees. They're not donors. So it makes a big difference and that's why we've been very successful and we are a gathering of free minds, open-minded. We have lots of debates. We discuss uh, philosophy, history, science and technology, economics, finance, uh, annuities. Uh, no, we, yeah, we, it's, uh, it's been great. I've living. spoken there. It's uh, how long? How long yeah. has it been going on, Mark? How long has it been? I know. Well, I left Fee in uh, in uh, in 2020 after Freedom Fest, even though it was very uh, Fee Fest. It was very successful. Uh, and so we started it up again in 2007. So we've mm -hmm. been going for some 15 years. Uh, it's always been in Las Vegas, but with the lockdown last year, we moved to South Dakota and we had a record crowd of nearly 3,000 people. Uh, and Senator uh, or uh, Governor Nome was there and her husband mm -hmm. did a wonderful job welcoming, welcoming us to the freest state in the union. Yep. Um, and so we're, we're back in Vegas this year. We have uh, John Cleese, the, the British uh, comedian and actor and producer as our keynote speaker. But we also have Kennedy from Fox Business who is our, gonna be our MC for all three days. We have over a thousand people signed up. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a really big conference. And then next year, like you said, we're, we're now every other year moving to another part of the city. So we're going to Memphis, Tennessee the following year, mm -hmm. next year. Uh, we just want to move around a bit. We're thinking of doing an Alaskan cruise, uh, maybe go to Maine, sure. New Orleans, Florida, all kinds of possibilities. I recommend people to go. I've, I've spoken there. I've been a guest there. I've, I've walked the floors there. I've done that for a long, long time. Um, and just when my schedule can permit it, I actually do go and speak and exhibit there. But this year they have Steve Forbes and Ben Stein and Glenn, Glenn Greenwald, just to name a few, that's going to be speaking there. Um, and, and we'll have that link on our site, freedomfest.com, uh, which Mark is, he's kind of the grand poobah of that. And him and Joanne kind of oversee it, make sure that, you know, the, they're attracting talent. Obviously, Mark knows everybody and everyone knows Mark. So he's one phone call away from getting almost anyone there. But I think what's unique about that event, too, is your film fest. It's actually, you know, people say, well, it's a financial event. It's, no, it's more than that. It's uh, it's it's a, it's what he says. It's a meeting of free minds. But the the film fest I find very very interesting. Was that I'm assuming that's Joanne's idea, correct? Right. Yeah. Joanne is. The, she loves. Uh, uh, she loves Broadway. She loves film. She goes to films all the time. She does reviews. Okay. And so the Anthem Film Festival, uh, the people have to pay. Uh, you know, it's an official film festival. Yes. And uh, she has to turn away tons of. I mean, she's very careful on uh, her and her committee on uh, what films are accepted and. Some of them have gone on to win Emmy Awards and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, he's, they, they've actually had a very, very big success. So she's literally inundated like, uh, like uh, Sundance and all the other film festivals. And they, mm -hmm. can, they, they have to ferret out the ones to, to bring in. Like last year, we had Reagan, uh, this new film coming out on uh, this biopic on Ronald Reagan. Uh, that turned out to be uh, a big successful uh, uh, appearance, and, and we're hoping to show the entire film uh, at this year's uh, event uh, with Dennis Quaid as uh, as Ronald Reagan. So uh, it's uh, 
she's done a marvelous job with that. Yes, yeah, so it's a film festival. We're also adding for the first time the first libertarian comedy uh, uh, fest. <laughs> uh, we're bringing in pop comedians, you know, with John Cleese being sure. uh, our keynote speaker, we thought that would be appropriate. And frankly, with what's going on in the world, we need a little, uh, we need a little humor. We, 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 we really do. We're talking to Dr. Mark Scalzi, and if you don't know who he is, you've been living under a rock. But, uh, you know, he's, he's done so much groundbreaking work in economics, finance, management. Um, he's just well known. He's been on just about every show you've ever heard of. Uh, if you remember a long time ago in, the, in like the, the late, like 2008, 2009, he was on Larry Kudlow's show on CNBC way back in the day. And he actually has, Grantham University has actually renamed its business school, the Mark Skousen School of Business. So you talk about chops and credentials, it's Mark Skousen. I, I met him a long, long time ago during what's called the money shows. And the money shows were like, um, and they still are out there, but back then they were huge. And, and anybody who was anybody that, that knew their stuff on their specific topic of choice was there speaking and, and interacting with consumers. And then what Mark has done, in my opinion, is taken that model and the, the Freedom Fest is just morphed into something that's a lot more dynamic and not just a one lane. I, I love the people at the Money Show, but Freedom Fest is something that you might wanna look into. Combination vacation, combination learning about things, opening your mind to things, having some fun and meeting some like-minded individuals that are, um, you know, that, that share in what you're trying to do. And by the way, um, Mark, one of his accolades that I think is, is unique, and I don't think anyone mentions it enough, he's been identified as one of the most 20, influ in, most 20 influential living economists on the planet. I mean, that's, that's rarefied air. And going into that, Mark, you know, obviously people are, are listening to this because they want to know what someone like you thinks about current markets and, and where we are uh, at the time of this taping. You know, I do enough annuity content, 600 videos and podcasts and, and written seven books on annuities. We can talk annuities, but I don't want to talk about annuities. I want you to, to <laughs> lean in hard and, and give some people some insight on what you're seeing here with markets, economy, and the global environment. Obviously, at the time of this taping, Russia's... Uh, Russia's messing around with Ukraine. So I'd love to hear where you're standing on all this. You know, it's interesting because there, there's always a dynamic changes going on. I mean, you mentioned the money show, which you and I have spoken to on many occasions. Mm -hmm. And you're right, back in the 80s, they used to have hundreds, uh, thousands of people. Huge show up and and uh, and that model started uh, changing uh they used to offer a free conference and the only people who paid were the exhibitors mm -hmm. uh and uh th then then the the turnout started drifting downward so they've actually switched yeah. to a model where they're starting to charge people which i think is a better model uh, frankly and you that's pioneered that the you pioneered that i mean you were you were yeah. pioneers take all the arrows as as they say i remember when you first put that out and I'm like, no, he's just trying to filter people. <laughs> he wants yeah, people, he don't want tire big, kickers. Yeah. He wants people that are going to drive the car. Yeah, um, that's right. We don't want just tire kickers. You're absolutely right. And uh, we want qualified individuals. So we have mm -hmm. extremely wealthy people who come to Freedom Fest. Now we sure. charge four or $500, but you get your money's worth you because we're, we're not begging you for money. We're not doing fundraising. We're telling people we're giving you information mm -hmm. and we do have exhibitors like yourself and so forth, but we mm -hmm. tell everyone, you know, we're there to give you information, not just right. to sell you a product. So, uh, and I've always admired you stand for, for that approach. And, and so we have oil and gas people and so on, but we put them up on the stage and say, well, what's the outlook for oil and stuff, not right. just uh, buy my product. So, um, that that's really important and so we've always charged money for our attendees uh because we want to qualify them it's so important but we still get several thousand people because of what uh, we offer alternative points of view we have lots of debates on various topics and so and we have our mock trial this year our mock trial is we're putting drug legalization on trial is nice. just really a good thing to be moving toward but especially in yeah. vegas i mean we're talking about all that yeah. um you know one of the things i i think that that's a treasure that you put out is is your newsletter and um you know it's been you've been doing it for so long um and it's just a resource for most people that are serious about their retirement investing 
Um, getting back to my a question about what's happening right now, um, I love the fact that you don't tiptoe around. You jump in and tell people what you think. What are you thinking right now about the markets and the, and the global environment? So the, the market is uh, constantly changing. We need to know the signs of the times of war. You can't just ignore the things that are going on, the rapid inflation. We, we're, we're actually at a major transition because really for the last 40 years, since I started my newsletter in 1980, when mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan was elected president, and Reaganomics made a huge difference. And I remember in 1981, I, I put out a promotion. I wrote my own promotion for my newsletter and it was called The Financial Shock of 1981. You open up the envelope and it says, Reaganomics will work, sell your gold and silver and buy stocks and bonds. And that was a, a, a promotion that was spot on in terms yep. of its prediction, but it failed miserably because nobody really believed it. Everyone thought, well, we're just gonna have more and more rapid inflation and, and you need to buy gold and silver and so forth. And that turned out to not, not be the case. So we need to be alert to changes that are going on. So we had a 40 year run on uh, the stock and bond markets. <clears throat> I do think we've seen the end of the bond market rally because the government was so determined to bring back inflation. They worked at it, worked at it, worked at it. <laughs> it took them years, but they finally accomplished their goal. And, uh, so we're back to uh, the 70s style of inflation and uh, interest rates are finally starting to come back up. So I think the bond market is more of an, however, technology is still very real, the breakthroughs mm -hmm. and advances. So I'm still bullish on the stock market. Uh, I do think that this is going to be a difficult year. It has been a difficult year. Uh, Biden administration is doing everything wrong in terms just throwing money at problems, causing yep. inflation, uh, it wants to raise taxes on entrepreneurs, uh, a tax on, on our most successful citizens, the billionaires, the Elon Musk in the world. Uh, I, I think it's tragic uh, what's going on and I think they will get uh, their head handed to them in November uh, assuming their the elections are uh, clean and not not f fraudulent like sometimes in the past, I, I am concerned about the legitimacy of our voting process. It's a very serious concern with ballot uh, harvesting that the Democrats do, and so and they're they're just much better than the Republicans are in <laughs> squeezing squeezing the system. I'm afraid so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling it like it is. I, I'm not happy with uh, the Biden administration and their threats of taxes and regulations. I mean, look, uh, I was really glad to see the, the federal judge rule the mask mandates uh, to stop the mask mandates on the airlines. And the airlines mm -hmm. immediately said, okay, it's now optional. But look at the Biden administration. They hate to give up power, so they're they're going after this and, and they're uh, going to a higher court to see if they can overturn this decision. You know, when was the last time we let people make their own decisions uh, rather than government telling us what to do? Uh, I think that's, that's a serious problem in, in today's world. But look, uh, I don't want to be too pessimistic because uh, we, we are still fully invested. We think there's great opportunities out there. We do have a position in gold and silver and oil, particularly oil has done extremely well. Uh, so we like some of our oil stocks as well, but technology is not dead by any means. So we've been uh, big uh, investors in uh, Tesla and Elon Musk and what he's doing. Um, so, and you know, it's funny because uh, the Biden administration has not been able to push through any of their tax increases. And so we're still living under the Trump tax cuts. So that's a positive that's still going on. So I'm hoping, hoping that won't be reversed. But the, the big sea change is that inflation is back mm -hmm. and that uh, the 40 year bull market in bonds that lasted much longer than any of us ever thought it's over now, unfortunately. And uh, so now I'm telling people to switch out of uh, their in bond investments and to switch into dividend paying stocks, which continue to do very well. 
certainly annuities fit into that category as well. We are recommending all of these kinds of things, income mm -hmm. oriented investments, dividend paying stocks. Sure. This will cushion the fall. Uh, and we've certainly seen uh, a sell off in the technology and the high growth stocks. They were all way overvalued. We all knew that. We just didn't know when it was going to reverse. It's very difficult to figure out the tops of the, of the markets. All right, uh, Mark, on the Fed, I know that you've met pretty much every Fed chair, except for the current one, and that's going to take place, I guarantee you. Give me your opinion, because you uh, tell us again what your, your degree was. Um, well, I think it was monetary economics, correct? Yep, I have a PhD in monetary economics from George Washington University. So this has been a major area of interest and longtime friends with the mon monetarist economist of, of the 20th century, Milton Friedman. So uh, very much alert to the supply of money and the price of money, which is interest rates. Uh, I don't think Jay Powell is anywhere close to a Paul Volcker. Paul Volcker was uh, determined to fight and beat inflation, and he did. And it took a lot of guts. Uh, I mean, he, he got a lot of public criticism for what he did. Jay Powell, I think, is uh, too easygoing and too political to really uh, hammer and, and fight inflation. In fact, he, he increased the money supply. The money supply increased 45% over the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. 45%. So are you surprised we don't have, in, we have inflation? Mm -hmm. And also Biden administration helped those things along because they gave away so much free money uh, in, uh, in, during the pandemic, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars to the point where we now have a labor shortage in this country because so many people still find it easier not to work mm -hmm. than to go out and get a job. So that's still a problem. And, and so the labor shortage alone is gonna keep inflation uh, high, but in addition, we have the supply chain shortages. Uh, this we have this war going on in Ukraine. Ukraine is a major producer of uh, of grains and mm -hmm. uh, uh, commodities and so forth. It's the breadbasket of Europe, and it's all been shut down because of this war. So there are shortages and higher prices in copper and gold and silver and aluminum and nickel and oil and so on. You just go down the line and almost all the commodities have gone up. So uh, inflation indexing, inflation hedging is extremely important. Um, and you're not gonna get that with the bond markets unless you, unless you buy uh, uh, the, the uh, T-bills, you know, that are uh, tied, the tips that the are tips. tied to the yeah. inflation rate. Mm -hmm. And even then the CPI kind of underestimates how bad the inflation is. I basically argue you need at least 10, 12% return on your assets just to stay even. And real estate is one area that you can do that. Uh, real estate market has still been extremely hot. I mean, you said you had an office in Las Vegas. I, I mean, do. When, you sell, when you sell a home in Las Vegas now, there are four or five bids on, this, on, on these homes and these apartments. Uh, and even out here in California, our, our, uh, we bought a home uh, two or three years ago and it's already gone up dramatically, even, even though we keep hearing that everybody's leaving California. So, um, so yeah, there are some things that you can do to protect yourself, but, uh, the fed, I don't think they have the guts, uh, to really stop inflation. They have slowed it down. The money supply growth rate that was 26% sure. a year or so ago is now down to six, six or 7%. So we are getting back to a little bit, more normal we're not we're not headed for runaway inflation this is not going to be a hyperinflation but i just think that when you let the cat out of the bag it's really hard to control inflation so they have a two percent goal and it and they fought and worked uh, all the time to get it to get it up to two percent and then it just zoomed past two yeah. percent to six or seven percent it's uh friedrich hayek the great austrian economist said it's like a tiger by the tail how do you control a tiger by the tail? Well, you don't. And that's the way inflation is. Inflation is kind of, uh, it's really hard to control. It takes a while. Once it gets out, you just don't know with all these shortages and so forth. I mean, you go and I, I used to buy a, a donut every once in a while at the donut shop here in California. It was 95 cents. 
for a glazed donut. And just overnight, dollar twenty-five. And the same thing with all the fast food restaurants. Yeah. And you go into the grocery stores, you go in to buy cars, you go to rent, you get on an airplane, everything is substantially higher. And that's not going to change for a long time. So do you see the Fed being tough enough to continue to raise rates as needed as all of us who know anything about money is you know, they have to, are they? It's one thing to yes, have to, but are they? They've announced uh, plans. Uh, Powell has announced plans to increase incrementally the Fed funds rate 6% or the discount rate 6%. So that, or Do six you believe times, that? Six Do you times, believe so that? Six times. So that means, yes, I think they will get up to 3%. But that okay. still means that, that you have negative real interest rates Correct. because inflation is 6 or 7%. So yes, I think they... I think they have to raise rates because the you got to remember the bond market is what the bond market people they're the ones who really run things and if their interest rates are higher than the fed then that's like printing money to banks because the banks simply borrow all the money they want mm -hmm. from the federal reserve and then they turn right around and get uh, two or three or four percent more points uh, on leverage money so that's going to continue the boom so if they they wanted to be really serious, they'd have to raise the rate higher than six times. So even though it's just gonna be a quarter point each time, uh, it's it's not going to do very much. It's moving, it's in the right direction. I'm really glad they're doing that, but I don't. I just don't think they have the guts to really crush inflation because they started it, you know? It's like putting the fox <laughs> in charge of the hen hound. <laughs> I, I know, and I, I laugh because, um... I hear them trying, hear the administration trying to blame Putin for inflation. And, and anyone with a rational brain knows that if there is a portion, it's less than 10% that's attached to that increase, if any at all. Um, what is your take on their, tr their, their current messaging to get out of the front? Do you think that's sticking at all? Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're Republicans or Democrats, you're going to try to blame someone else. I mean, sure. tr Trump, Trump did the same thing. Absolutely. Uh, but I do think the war has something to do with it. It is creating shortages. It is creating higher oil prices. It in increases the in, in, in military industrial complex. So I, I do think that plays a role. It makes the deficits uh, higher and it puts more pressure on the Fed to expand the money supply to pay for these uh, debts and stuff uh but you know look at it this way the, the keynesian policy of uh, running deficits during a recession and then a, you run surpluses during full employment that that's bankrupt the bank keynesian model is now bankrupt as i tell my students because right now we should be running a surplus because we have full employment not only do we have full employment we have labor shortages so we should be running a surplus and yet we're running record prof record deficits right now and the treas and the, uh, the uh, national debt is over 30 trillion dollars thank thank goodness i mean i have to give a shout out to joe manchin the senator from west virginia the democrat who is mm -hmm. stopping all of even more spending yeah. that uh, the biden administration wants to do and he's saying the buck stops here folks uh, we're trying to invite Joe Manchin to come and speak at Freedom Fest. He's kind of a hero, mm -hmm. but it is kind of nice to be in a Senate that's 50-50. So that means every senator now has a very powerful position. Mm -hmm. I, I am convinced that, again, if the voter, if, if you have a legitimate voting uh, system in place, uh, the the Democrats are going to be routed in, in November. The Republicans should get substantial positions, uh, majority positions in both the House and the Senate. That's what uh, electionbettingodds.com is predicting. Mm -hmm. They've been quite accurate before. And uh, so this is, this is a really good sign. However, Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, whoever it is, is still going to be president for the mm -hmm. next two more years. So there's going to be a lot of vetoing and uh, gridlock that sure. takes place. The stock market tends to like that. But I, I actually think if we get through to November with a no tax increase, and Biden includes in that the elimination of the long-term capital gains rate, 
this tax on billionaires, which is really millionaires, and it's a wealth tax. And on top of that, uh, trying to uh, remove the stepped up basis in estate planning. I don't know if you deal with that. It would yeah, absolutely. Program. It's a major issue. Um, the, the, the assuming none of those pass, and that's what I'm hoping, then there he's not going to get any kind of a tax increase. So I think the stock market will will actually do quite well after the November election with the Republicans in place. So that's my interesting. My I want to pivot a little bit. Um, you have obviously seen a lot of trends. You've been there for a lot of the market movements over the past numerous decades. Um, so you, you're a student, you're a teacher, you're, I mean, you, you get it. But the newest thing obviously is cryptocurrency. And I know that you've weighed in on cryptocurrency. And when I told some of my clients that I was having you on, a lot of them were like, I'd love to hear his take on that. Cause I know he's, he's just going to give me the, the straight, the straight stuff on it. Talk, give me some insight, Mark, on what Mark Skousen thinks about crypto. Well, um, crypto is, is one that we've actually, I say six or seven years ago, we had our first discussions and panels at Freedom Fest on cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And so we were, we were in there fairly early in the game and we have, we have a number of subscriber or attendees at, at Freedom Fest who have come up to me and said, uh, you made me a millionaire. And I said, Gee, how, how's that? I, I thought I did okay, but how did I make you a millionaire? And he said, well, I came, came to Freedom Fast. You talked about crypto. I bought Bitcoin at 500 bucks and now it's mm -hmm. worth 40, 40,000. Right. Uh, so there are people out there that have benefited from that advice. So I, I'm, I'm not a skeptic. I actually think that crypto is, and blockchain technology and, uh, and it, it serves a valuable service and we need to stay on top of it and so forth. Now, I do think that they're, they are at a turning point here. And I just, I just don't know. I mean, I'm always skeptical of people that say, oh, oil is at $100. It's going to 200 Right. Uh, and, and how often have they been proven wrong where they get excess, excessive exuberance? And that's what's happened to the crypto market. So we've we've been trying to get into crypto and thinking we found the bottom here, but it has not panned out at all. I think it's very real, but it's kind of like the marijuana market. We've made marijuana legal, but who's made money on the marijuana stocks? Because there's so much supply out there. And it's the same thing with the cryptocurrencies. I mean, there's 3,000 cryptocurrencies out there, and they're all vying to be the important one. We, we assume it's going to be a winner take all market uh, with Bitcoin, but uh, there are some other cryptocurrencies coming online that seem to offer better service. You know, one of the problems with crypto is that they can't, they can't confirm their, their transactions on a timely basis. It takes uh, 10 minutes to confirm with all of the other owners as it's public information on the blockchain it takes like 10 minutes to confirm a trade. Well, you can't do that when you have millions and millions of trades every day on the financial markets and that sort of thing. So they're trying to develop alternative ways in order to confirm transactions with the crypto so cryptos can actually be used uh, in transactions and not just as a store of value or a hedge. Uh, hedge. So uh, it's... I'm, I'm kind of on the sidelines right now in some ways, uh, just waiting for this market to really take off again. And uh, so we're, it's kind of like the marijuana stocks, we're on the sidelines because the supply, we, do, we don't know, we, we need to have some kind of a, a consolidation period, if you will, mm -hmm. on this whole area. And maybe we're getting it with the regulations that are finally coming in with the, uh, the SEC regulating, the mm -hmm. CFTC regulating crypto. We do have exchange now. We have the futures market for uh, the uh, blockchain or for Bitcoin. Uh, we have Grayscale as a way to do it. Uh, Amplify, Transformational, Data Fund, uh, Symbol Block, BLOK, but the, they're all in kind of bear markets. We, we, we aren't not, all technology, and this is a technology play, 
are in bear markets right now. And I just don't know how long it's going to last. It's not going to, it's not the end of the world. We are going to see uh, a recovery here. I just don't know when it's going to start. So I'm pretty much on the sidelines right now and staying more in the commodity field. That's where the inflation hedges are now, right, right now. What's your, what's your insight? We hear of smaller governments making their own crypto. Uh, the one that cracks me up is the Bahamas with the sand dollar. Um, but you know, you, you have, um, you have the Biden administration announcing that they're studying and putting together the gold ribbon panel. The fact that you're not on it makes it a less than a gold ribbon to me, um, to study government, um, involvement in cryptocurrency. My, my, uh, conspiracy theory mark for the day is they would love to do cryptocurrency because then they could tax us real time. There'd be no more April 15th. It'd just be, they could tax anytime they want to. And um, what's your take on governments getting into crypto, Patriot crypto, Eagle crypto, whatever the, the government, do you see the United States eventually entering into that space in a big way? Uh, yeah, I think that they see an opportunity here. Uh, Government has always been involved in, in monetary affairs, sure. uh, all the way with the the Bank of England creating the first banknotes and, and under. The, but they had a gold standard, and the stable coins, which is what the government uh, coins are called, the stable mm -hmm. coins. Though they they link it to their currency, and so I I don't see how that mm -hmm. is going to uh, cause investors to say, oh yeah, we can count on that. It's linked to the dollar, it's linked to the euro. Meanwhile, they continue to inflate the, the underlying security or currency. So uh, I think there's a real problem there. And you also have what is known as Gresham's Law. Gresham's Law states that bad money drives out good. So that means that uh, you, you spend this, you spend the cash, right? You spend the dollars. right? And you take the bitcoins and you put them in, put them away, just like with your gold or silver coins. I have a gold coin right here. The gold coin does not circulate at right. all. You've got it in safety deposit boxes and so forth. That's Gresham's law. Bad money drives out good. This is the bad money, the paper money, and uh, cryptos are uh, the hard money because the bitcoin you can only make 21 million bitcoin. And even six million of it has disappeared completely because they don't know the codes to get it to get to their <laughs> six million Bitcoin. There's some horror so, stories for sure on those. There yeah. are some horror stories as well. But the point is that they have limited supply. So your current when they try to link the cryptocurrencies uh, to a unlimited supply. I don't think that that's going to be very successful. They will still attempt to do it. And of course, they hate the idea that you can have some privacy in your transactions yep. with cryptocurrencies and so forth. They are trying to uh, work hard to get around that so that they can follow you. And we're, we're adopting the Chinese model in the United States and other major countries where the government is, wants to monitor everything that you do. This is the biggest danger, by the way, these wealth taxes, like taxing on unrealized capital gains under this new billionaire's 20% tax. That That's insane. Biden. A lot of people don't realize, uh, you know, they've given a lot of criticism of it, that it's complexity and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the biggest danger is that now you, it, it makes everybody a criminal because uh, you have to declare all your assets. And that means uh, gold and silver, that means artwork, uh, that means diamonds, uh, mm -hmm. any jewelry, it's all assets, right? And theoretically, it all has to be measured. And so this is a great way for the government to get into the door and where we lose financial privacy uh, completely. Uh, this is why uh, France and Sweden and uh, these other countries have actually uh, abolish their wealth taxes because they were making every person uh, basically a criminal uh, because they weren't declaring all of their assets and who would. In addition to that type of insane legislation that's being proposed, for the baby boomer retiree, pre-retirees, people that are pointing toward retirement and planning for it, what are some of the things that you would tell them to watch out for and how to go about protecting from, from those gotchas? 
Well, first of all, I think the government has been very clever uh, in their technique to avoid the unfunded liability problem. You know, we always talk about, well, there's these trillions of dollars of unfunded liabilities of Social Security and Medi Medicare and so forth. But you notice that they keep pushing it further and further into the future. They keep saying, well, I mean, I remember in the, in the 1980s saying, oh, the unfunded liability is going to blow up on us in the year 2000. And now we're here at 2022. And here's the reason, because they made Social Security now taxable. The Medicare premiums are now $500 or more a month. It was, we paid into Medicare all our lives, and now when we're on Medicare, we're still paying a premium of $500 a month. And so between Social Security being taxed, and then RMD, RMD, required minimum distribution. This is, mm -hmm. for anybody who's 72 or older, they know what RMD is. That means that seven to eight percent of your tax-free IRA, and I don't know if annuities are exempt from this. No, 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 they're not. Yeah, uh, and uh, and so they have inside of way. IRAs, anything inside of an IRA is subject to a required minimum distribution. Period. Right, but it, it, if you have an annuity outside of your IRA, Correct. you'd probably be okay. Correct. It, it can uh, grow tax deferred. But but yeah, this the. Uh, all, all these 401k plans and these IRAs and SEPs and so forth, they're all subject. I've been hit for it. I mean, I'm paying over $100,000 uh, that I have to take out and, uh, and it becomes taxable. So they have all these ways of getting money back. And so we have to be really concerned. How do you avoid this? And we thought the IRAs and stuff were really uh, jackpot for us. Now, I believe here, here's, I guess maybe you could answer me this question, but if you have a set, uh, if you have a Roth IRA, that's not subject to tax, but I think it's still part of the RMD. I could here's the wrong. problem with the, here's the problem with the Roth and I leave all tax questions to, I'm a smart guy, I leave all tax questions to tax lawyers and CPAs. But what, what I will tell you something interesting about the Roth and I hope this never comes true, but I wouldn't be surprised if the government came back on the Roth IRA that supposedly is going to be tax free for life, no restrictions. If they came in and started putting restrictions on that Roth IRA taxation issue, because people have to remember everything is a voting block and Roth IRA holders are a very small voting block and that can be easily framed as the evil rich by some politician. And I, it wouldn't surprise me in the future if they came out and said, yes, we know you've paid up the upfront taxes on the Roth. And yes, we know that you are under the, um, the guise, you bought it because you thought it, everything would be tax-free, but now it's only tax-free for these five things. And yeah. that wouldn't surprise me. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope there's an uprising, but I don't trust politicians. And when you, when you front end load a Roth and pay all the taxes up front, you're saying to the politicians in DC, I totally trust you. And that's a tough <laughs> one for me yeah. to overcome. Yeah, no, I Stan, I think you're absolutely right here. So I think that does push people into underground investments to buy gold and silver in cash, squirrel it away, give it to your heirs here. This, Take mm -hmm. take this. That's that's my estate plan here. <laughs> Pass it on. Um, and uh, there's a lot to be said for art, artworks, uh, jewelry, um, uh, sculptures. They're just be careful with those non fungible tokens. If you don't know what a non fungible token NFT yeah, that, is, that be one, careful out a, there. That's that's a that's a bubble. If you ask me, that sounds like mania <laughs> to to me. You can. You own this, but if if the electricity goes out, you don't own it. <laughs> and by the way, this is a we're one of the things we're going to do at Freedom Fest is we we have a film that Joanne has regarding the the grid going out. Mm -hmm. And you know, if the grid goes out, and and they can they can blow up an atomic bomb in the sky, okay, that knocks out the electric grid system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that ha we have a whole film on this, uh, and it is a real danger. It's a much bigger danger, frankly, than a nuclear war, uh, because they win the war without destroying any of the infrastructure. Yeah. But imagine what our lives would be like 
course, we wouldn't even be doing this yes. uh, if you didn't have an electric power system. I mean, people would be dying right and left. So how do you prepare for that? Well, you prepare for that by going to the survival modes, uh, mm -hmm. survival tools and equipment and food and everything that, that our gold bug people used to talk about back in the 70s. There's something to be said for that. Yep. as a protection while now there are some things that electric utilities are doing to break away from the grid and have their own uh, uh, uh electric power system that that's something that i think is really going to be interesting that we're going to discuss in detail at, at this year's freedom fest mark we're coming up um i got a couple more questions for you and then we're going to wrap it up but I'm, I'm wondering you know you've done so much and you've you really have your legacy is incredible what's the future for mark Skousen? you still you still gonna plot away every day at this and try to help people with uh, their decisions what do you what's the plan for mark well i've established freedom fest and that will go on even after i pass on and sure. that's that's uh, we we're well in place how, how that's taking place and i also have uh, uh so i've written a couple of textbooks which i think are extremely important for the future generations and i teach at chapman university i give mm -hmm. lectures and so forth uh, so one's called economic logic it's a free market textbook that's in its fifth edition we're working on the sixth edition uh and that's so important. And then I have this history of economics called The Making of Modern Economics, which is in its fourth edition, published by Rutledge. Uh, and it, it's it's a great way to teach our future generation um, what what their the basic economics uh, that we need, the sound economic policies that we need to adopt to continue to grow, to continue to prosper to enjoy life to its fullest, uh, peace, prosperity, and liberty. Those are the three grand principles. Uh, peace, prosperity, and liberty mm -hmm. all go together. Uh, you can have one without the other, but you don't, have a, you don't maximize uh, your well-being without those things, peace, prosperity, and liberty. So no those doubt. are the things that I try to inculcate. So we, we leave to the future, uh, books, uh, speeches, articles. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's my that's uh, message to the future. Yeah. One last question. I do this to all of my celebrity guests that are on and I don't tell them in advance what I'm going to ask, but I call it, I call it Mark, I call it the mic drop moment. So I'm going to hand you the mic. You're going to say something that's uh, jaw dropping and inspirational and poignant to the listeners. And then we're going to close this thing up. So mic drop moment, Mark Skousen, go. So what is the purpose of life? Something that I think everybody thinks of from time to time. And for me, it has always been to, to find God and to find ourselves in relationship with a divine being who I think has created this earth and given us the opportunity to be tested to see if we can fulfill our destiny. And we make mistakes on the way, but if we can learn from those mistakes, that to me is so important. So I am an optimist and I encourage all of your listeners to be optimistic, to learn from our mistakes, and to also to, to remember that the, the important things in life are love and friendship, and to avoid grudges, which is very difficult. A lot of times people hold major grudges in life, and it's a source of great depression and and mm -hmm. irritation. And I guess the final thing I would say is if, if you're not healthy, you're not wealthy. And you really, in today's world, we need to spend more time in uh, health is more than just exercise. It's more than just diet. It's a certain attitude. And we need to wake up every morning and say to ourselves, wow, it's a beautiful day today. The Lord has surely blessed me. 
uh, what can I do to make it a, a, a better day today, not only for ourselves, but for others. So that involves uh, helping others and not just looking at yourself in the mirror. Uh, and that's, that's my creed. That's fantastic. And who, who said that is Dr. Mark Skousen. He's a good friend. He's a great person. And he's a, he's a smart as heck economist and financial brain that you should tune into. Once again, we're going to have all this stuff on our site and you can link to that. Um, I want to thank everybody on the, all the major podcast platforms for listening to Fun with Annuities and viewing us on the Fun with Annuities YouTube channel. And I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Fun with Annuities. Please hit the subscribe button and make sure to go to my site at theannuityman.com where you can run your own SPIA, DIA, and QLAC quotes and see a live feed of the best MIGA fix rates in the country and even get indexed and income rider quotes as well. You can also sign up for my six annuity owner's manual books and I'll ship them for free and under no obligation. I also encourage you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me, Stan the Annuity Man, so we can have a full discussion of your specific situation. It will be the best brutally factual and truthful advice you will ever get, and that's one guarantee you should definitely take advantage of. So join me next time for the number one annuity podcast on the planet, Fun with Annuities.